It's a forgotten game of winners. With only one loser. It was the greatest sport ever played, and I was lucky enough to be its announcer from 1991 to 2020. <laughs> I even got to call games in the heyday. I called games for Buck McMackey. You all saw me out there, dominating. You saw the way I wouldn't catch a ball to save my life. As soon as the ball hit my hands, boom, in somebody else's hands before they can even think about tackling me. Buck was one of the greatest in this or any era. In 11 seasons, he was only smeared once. A game where only the strongest survived. You know, when I was a kid, my father would take us to Cranbow Field every Saturday. Those players were like gods to us, you know? I, uh, I used to sit and watch them play, and I, I dream of going pro like them someday myself. You know, for one shining moment, I did that. Until the league went under. Sorry, Pops. The last game? Yeah, the last game I ever called was July 6, 2020. And to me, that's the day that professional sports died in America. It's unclear where the game originated. Some say Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. Others say Southie in Boston. But most likely, it was in Philadelphia when some kids were playing football and decided they wanted to have cheesesteaks. It was lunchtime and one of the kids goes, hey, let's go to Gino's for a cheesesteak. And so the kid goes, I don't want a cheesesteak, I'm vegetarian. And then boom, just like that, smear to queer was invented. The game was brilliant in its simplicity. You threw the ball up in the air, it landed next to somebody, and now they're the queer. They have to pick it up and get rid of it or else... Once it became a professional sport, Smear the Queer swept the nation. Everybody had a team. The Topeka Baptists, the New England Rastafarians, the San Diego Stepdads. It was a cultural phenomenon. The stadiums were packed every Saturday. And the rules were simple. The home team would come out, have six innings to smear their queer. Then it goes to the visitors, they have seven outings to smear theirs. Get all the analytics and the overcoaching. It was a simple game. Whoever smeared the most queers won. It was an honor to be a part of an STQL dynasty. It was more than a game, man. It was an American institution. In 2015, the league instituted a new rule where teams could now choose one player to be queer the whole game. Yeah, back then I was warming the bench in the Wyoming pistol whippers and feeling pretty down on myself. But then coach came and took me aside and said, you are the all-time queer. Uh, made me feel pretty good. I think every team after that in the league had an all-time queer. But it took its toll. This is what they signed up for, man. Nobody made you be queer. You knew what you were getting yourself into. You signed up to be the queer, and I signed up to smash the queer. Like, what? Like, come on now. This is, this is how the game was played back then. Suddenly, there was just all this new information about head injuries, and people were getting more and more concerned. I was asked to study the brains of several retired all-time queers from the STQL. Uh, and, well, if you look over here, we have an example of healthy, unsmeared brain tissue. And then what, and then you're just gonna cut to that, or? Do you, you notice the coloring? It's a healthy purple. Whereas uh, this slide uh, is the brain tissue of a retired all-time queer. I think it speaks for itself. I don't wanna hear all that industry mumbo jumbo about doctors and lawyers and every time you eat a cheeseburger does somebody say oh we're, we're, we're causing heart attacks across the country no you know what this is what people want people want to eat a cheeseburger and they want to smear a queer this is this is what america this is america like well i don't understand what this retrospective is about frankly uh, i i uh, 
a lot of it. The whole thing is what doing do with the queens. You know, the name's not what's problematic about this. Do you understand? Kill the guy with the ball doesn't... You're killing a man. In fact, smear sounds a little bit too light for what they are doing. I always, I always say the Jews are worth the game. I've made it my life's mission to put an end to the all-time queer. Especially after the Felix Graham's incident of 94. Felix Graham's was all-time queer for the Miami Pink Sox. Things got out of control and he was smeared to death. Many people called the incident a hate crime, and gay rights groups started protesting at every game. That's when attendance got thinner and thinner. Whoa, hey, whoa, 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 hey, 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 no, no, no. Juice is worth the squeeze. Juice is worth the squeeze. With an ongoing concussion scandal and changing social attitudes, it seemed like things couldn't get any worse for the STQL. But no one was prepared for what happened next. We limped along until 2020, then COVID hit. That changed everything. In accordance with CDC guidelines, on-field social distancing rules were implemented, and players had to stand six feet apart at all times. And it just, since then, it just, it's just, it's just not the game we grew up with. When the league folded, a lot of players didn't have anything to fall back on. Some went into podcasting, others law enforcement. Still, there were others who tried to move on as if nothing had ever happened. And that's when Smear the Queer went underground. Men would lie to their families to go out and do what they loved. Like you, you have to understand one thing. I don't smoke, I don't drink, okay? My only addiction was smearing the queer. We were all heartbroken, but you just gotta lick your wounds and move on, I suppose. But when the league ended, the silver lining, is it gave me a chance to be a father. Oh, your, your kids still play smear the queer then? Oh, I don't have custody. Critics, man, they, they can say whatever they want, all right? It's not like I got my father killed from not paying my gambling debts, all right? Like, it was smear the queer. Buck was paid to smear the queer, and Buck was the best in the world at doing it. And it was a different time, and I get all that, but you know what? If they asked me to do it again today, I would do it in a heartbeat. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've gotta go lead a high-speed chase and maybe end my own life. All right, would that make you happy, critics? Blame it on the CTE. I think this game always be remembered as a national disgrace. If you could go back in time, would you do it all over again? All day. All day. All day. All day. I'm actually still playing. They started a new league in Uganda. I think uh, we are and we're starting the show at least on a somber note. Uh, yesterday, I mistakenly called um, 
a chimpanzee, a gorilla, and I was <sighs> reminded several times in the comments, and I just want to apologize to anybody, really any gorilla out there or chimp that was offended yeah. by what I said. Um, to me, um, how can I put this? They're all monkeys and I don't give a shit. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, also, this is a comedy show. We're aware that dick measuring involves measuring one's own penis. Yes. When we were saying that Elon Musk uh, was going to go around and measure many penises, and then <laughs> that would we, that was the joke. Yes. Uh, we didn't need to be corrected. So maybe before you take everything literally, you should sit back and think, perhaps they're kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Normal World. I'm Dave Landau. I'm Quarter Black Garrett. I and also feel very somber. And yes. we are joined today, as always, with the beautiful Angela. Angela. Aww, thanks. Yeah, it, me and every other commenter believe that. So, oh, yes, yeah. and we won't be measuring her penis. No, not we today. will not. Yes, because that is against the rules. And Zuckerberg will not be measuring thousands of penises. No, because that's not what you mean when that's, you say yeah, dick measuring contest. Yes, we we are all adults yeah. in a room of four people. Yesterday, yes, at least one of us would have known that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Right. Hey, if you haven't done it already, <laughs> uh, go subscribe on Blaze. You can use the code Normal Twenty. This is where it slides in right here. Whoosh. Well, it, it will eventually. Get You can get 20% off on your subscription over there. And then also, we're on YouTube, so, you know, like, subscribe, uh, do all those things. Press the up, press it down, do whatever you want to do. And uh, also joining us today, not just Angela, Gary Beekler from Nerdrotic. Thank you, sir. She's not the only beautiful one. That's Thank true. you. And, uh, you know, as far as dick measuring is concerned, we, we can just assume the size if you signed up for threads. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. I was excited when I saw it. <laughs> it's very small. No, I, who would want that? Like You're like, oh, cool, more social media. Dude, <laughs> more layers. Yes. Yeah. That's what I'm looking for. Oh, mm -hmm. man, is there a way to talk to my kids less? Yeah, <laughs> right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> How was your drive, Gary? It was lovely. It Beautiful, was flat, flat, flat drive. Sunny, hot. Mm. What is it, like 118 104, today? 104. Uh, I, you can drive fast in Texas, so that's good. Yeah, that's true. That's true. really open her up. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like way past the speed limit. Yeah. But I'm not going to get in trouble for that, am I? You can't say Does that. Does that count against my two strikes in I, California? I don't know why you just admitted that on the yeah, air. Yeah, you can't I say mean, that on the I air. I was totally doing the Who speed limit is the admitting to speeding on the air? The man's a <laughs> damn psycho. Your officer, I don't know what speed is. <laughs> what do you I, drive? Yeah. What, did, what were you driving? Uh, my FJ Cruiser. My two, uh, big YouTuber here, 2011 FJ Cruiser with 147,000 miles. It's a good, it's a sweet hey. ride. It's a sweet ride. Yeah, I dig it. Yeah. yeah. Well, what do you got? I have a couple cars. Oh, that's right. I have a Your Lincoln and a Caddy. Yeah. Caddy? Yeah, I have a Cadillac. Wait, is that oh, the one I from, rode in? You're from Michigan. Yeah, I have yeah, to drive okay. one. Okay. Yeah, that's why. It's I was, like like was going to say, obligatory because you're white, I, yeah. so you have to be Michigan and <laughs> yes. driving a Cadillac. Well, that's the deal. <laughs> yeah. if, uh, if not, it feels like I failed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> My son needs to see me as a success. <laughs> And I had to have a Lincoln just because I have to be like, hey, son, have you ever seen a, a Ford with leather and other plates? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Yes, it's, uh, sure, it leaks as much. What are you going to do? And, and, you but know, you're, you're about to get a brand new car, which is dope. Yeah. So just I, tell everybody I'm so gonna, they can steal So they it. can find me. Yeah. Uh, I'm getting a 68 Firebird. Look at that. Yeah. A first gen. Uh, it's not this like is a, a super, threads guy over here. Uh, yeah, not not a super expensive one. It's like right in the middle of the road, kind of lower end. Uh, just something I can like work on. You know, it Angela runs, has a car that gerbils drive in a commercial. <laughs> That's why I got it. <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> Which is fun. okay. You're, you're thought a girl. I could make it into a toaster for Halloween. Oh, you can. Yeah, that's easy. good. You put a little like toast on the top. Yeah, pop it out. A little lever. Yeah. I usually drive a nice uh, a 2008 rust bucket. I like the hail damage on it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I got a discount. That's what, I, it's for. what I nice hate touch. about Texas is yeah. all the hail. Dude, all the time. It's, it's like every constant. time it thunderstorms, it's just like a little bit, just enough to dent your ride. They have inflatable car covers. My neighbors, put, I know it's going to hail when my neighbors put on their inflatable car covers. Dude, that's a good idea. It is. I just try to find shelter. <laughs> 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 Try not to die. <laughs> Try not to die. Those yeah. have got to be expensive, right? The like they got a machine. You might and get stuff, a deal like... if you get a girlfriend with it, inflatable oh, girlfriend. Yeah, with it. Like wave around like this. Yeah. 
Yeah, you just tape blow up dolls to your car. <laughs> you're That's even better. Yeah. You're like, that no, we're pervert, guys. Don't worry. That's okay. Yeah. You're just, just crying because it's killing your girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gary, we talk a lot about Hollywood. Yeah. And uh, recently, the writers have struck. Is that how you say it? I don't know. Sure. Uh, they're not working, basically. And then the writers, uh, they told, they were like, hey, actors, hey, we're striking. You want to strike? And they were like, yeah, you know what? We're not working anyways. So, uh, the uh, SAG AFTRA, or as I like to call it, the uh, Film Actors Guild, they <laughs> authorized the walkout today. Guild president, friend dresser, yes, that friend dresser. The nanny. The nanny. Which She's I was the shocked. president? I the, didn't know. I didn't know that either. The news was on in the Bay, and I was like, is that Franny? From mm-hmm. Nick at Night? Yeah. Yes. Wow. The, yes. the friend dresser. Uh, she said that the uh, I'd still hate the it. motion picture and alliance and television producers, they were being rude to them because they were like not treating them right because they are film actors and stuff the film actors guild yeah, yeah i mean I like, you know they want to re- the producers want to replace important. them with the ai i think they're just being a bunch of voices about that i mean i don't care i mean i absolutely would if well I had if the you're choice. making barbie movies why don't you yeah that's it's a, the same thing don't you feel like this is kind of like the fight scene on the titanic yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> it's like look you're all gonna end up dead anyway mm, like this doesn't fun. it's not gonna work out and like friend dresser is just sitting there watching it How's the movie industry making money at this point? Dude, like, it's not. You don't need that many writers. You're not making anything that's a hit. Nobody likes the things that you're putting out, obviously. No. Burger King is actually putting Barbie sauce on... <laughs> Did you see that? What's a Barbie sauce? What is sauce? It's like yeah. pink sauce. It's a pink no. sauce pink on their mayo. burgers. They're like, yeah, don't you want, <laughs> don't you want <laughs> pink <laughs> sauce? <laughs> what is no. it? You're like, hey, you want a squirting burger? <laughs> Where come does it come on, from? I, <laughs> where, what is in the I sauce? I would only or assume no. the innards. <laughs> it's, it the comes from Ken. Math. It's true, though. Like they were showing it yesterday. It's a Burger King with pink sauce because apparently Burger King isn't doing poorly enough. They were like, hey, we made it more unappetizing. <laughs> yes. Burger King, they're the ones that did like the red burger for the Spider Man, yeah. the end of the Spider Verse. And there's a blue burger. And they did coming. the blue burger. I thought that was a joke. So mix them all. Maybe it is a joke. I, I, I can't tell anymore. It's hard to tell. I can't tell anymore. Maybe the pink sauce is a joke. Could it's be. a smoky, bright pink sauce. Stop. How could it be smoky? And smoky. Because <laughs> they incinerated her on it. <laughs> oh, it's, it's all mel- like it's just, Barbie's it melted looks, down. It, I, I know it's kind of like, but it does look like melted. That's disgusting. That? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. These people are the freaks. <laughs> they need to stop oh. it. It's uh, no thank. I mean, I would eat it for money, but I wouldn't give them money to eat it. No. Yeah. I, if a burger came in right now, if we had a producer come out here and give a burger, would you eat it? No. Damn. I'd be like, why would I eat? It's pink. Go away. Go. And then when I died in my hotel room, <laughs> yes. And everybody was like, was he vexed? And you're like, no, he wasn't. <laughs> no. no. He ate the Barbie burger. He just had it his way. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-huh. He had it her way. <laughs> I'd rather relapse. Than I die would. On no way. Pink I'm, Barbie. No, I would. I would rather take my chances with cocaine now. <laughs> yes. Than Barbie pink sauce. <laughs> <laughs> take the vaccine over Barbie. Yeah, pink I know. Sauce. No way. That's true. Yeah. No, I agree. Look at that stuff. How sorry. do you know it's not vaccine? I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes, the. You have to. How do you know that's not just J and J? <laughs> the stuff that they pulled. Maybe it's like Pepto, oh. and it's just preemptive yeah. Pepto that they put on there. Yeah, it's just they're just sh- working for you. <laughs> it's sugary bismol. <laughs> Here you it's go. It's abysmal. Yeah, it's definitely abysmal. <laughs> Among well, the actors willing to join the strike ooh. are Margot Robbie. Uh, that's Barbie right yeah. there. Uh, Jack Quaid, which is from The Boys, I believe. The Boys. The Boys. Oh, yeah. Yes. And Michael Rippetoe. Rip, pep, rap, Rappaport. Who, Rap, who's that? Michael Rappaport. Who's Rappaport? Uh, He's Phoebe's boyfriend from Friends. Is he still allowed to complain oh. about Trunk on the streets of New York? Michael Rappaport. That is also yeah. on the list. They, they if they make him either. stop that, then I am really for the strike. Oh, I'm actually yeah. for already, it anyway. So. Already I'm seeing like a lot yeah. of Spike Lee movies like Bamboozled and... Uh, he was in True Romance. Yeah. He's yeah. in True yeah. Romance. Just, and uh, that new show about the autistic kid on Netflix... That's a lot, dude. That's a, that is a you got to narrow it down. That one shows. show, I don't remember the name of it. It's like Limitless or something. Uh, Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Oh, that's just Spock. Sorry. Uh, I'm sure yeah, there's a lot of shows comments. about that. Everybody who now claims they're autistic, is it from that show? Yeah. Uh, that's yes. What, yep. That's what I love about Matt on the show, on our show, who, uh, you know, co-wrote the 
intro Charlton with Heston. Him. Yeah, Charlton Heston, who was on yesterday. He's actually on the spectrum, but then everybody I meet is like, no, I'm on the spectrum. I'm like, you're not, though. Like, you're no, just, you're just a, dumb. You're kind of a dick. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it doesn't explain you like, being a dick. <laughs> yeah. Just because you like movies doesn't mean you're autistic. I know. It amazing. just means you enjoy not paying attention to the world for an hour and a half. That's what I did with drugs. You did, too. Yeah, I did, too. Yeah. yeah. It's the best. A little longer an hour and a half, yeah. Too. Yeah. I never got like drunk and decade. did a bunch of drugs and I was like, sorry guys, I'm doing this because I'm on the spectrum. <laughs> there is this weird Excuse me. like yeah. like younger kids. It's like a, a thing that they've been doing. Like it's cool to be on the spectrum? Kind yeah. of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or neurodivergent in some way. Neurodivergent. It's cool to have a thing. She's smarter than us. <laughs> you have to have a thing to feel special. So that special is I mean is what, I'm on the spectrum of some kind. Or neurodivergent is that like chop off your member uh well, yeah it's mean your brain, it, your brain different your brain different i'm definitely brain That's how you different speak to but it's your not brain different it's not because i can like i wish i had rain man dude he was smart yeah I could go make money. He was smart. Do you know how much money I've lost to gambling? Yeah, and that's just a regular brain. <laughs> yeah, most just, of it. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, I, it's really became a problem, and then I had to reel that one in. Yeah. Anything that I try that involves addiction mm. turns out I'm bad at it. Yeah, there's, Same there's never been well, an addiction weird. where I'm like, oh, this works out for me. I feel like you'd build up a skill. <laughs> yeah, you think you would get a skill. No, even if you become skilled at it. By the time you win, you're like, how do I give this all back? Oh, yeah. it's like reversed. Yeah, and then you then you leave. You're getting thrown out because you 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 punch someone. <laughs> mm. So back to what, how we started this with uh, Michael Rappaport. <laughs> yeah, uh, he actually announced a he's he's going to join it. Good. This video. Oh, cool. He never makes those. Can, can we never make one. suggestions <laughs> on who can join? We should. Kathleen Kennedy. Kathleen. Ke well, she's not number an one. actor. She's, she counted as a writer. Mark, Mark Ruffalo can join the strike for the rest of time. Uh, I feel that Chris Mar Evans. I feel like Mark Ruffalo should just act. See, I feel the opposite. Like if he just acts and doesn't talk as Mark Ruffalo, I'm good with that. Yeah. He he never I don't think he movies. knows the difference, to be honest with you. That no. guy's got such a room temperature IQ. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I don't think he, he doesn't knows. realize. I'm, I love how Woody Harrelson was like, no, I'm really like kind of about the environment and smoking weed and like against, you know, the government and all this stuff. And everybody else was like, yeah, me too, but did it wrong. Yeah. And now Woody Harrelson came out, like went on SNL, yeah. talked about like the vax and everything else. And it, he was always authentic. And yeah. everybody else is just a moron. And then they go like, what? Look at him. He's saying stuff that we're not supposed to say. It's like, he's just been real the whole time. Yeah. That's Woody Harrelson. Thing. What a surprise. That's well, that's the 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 thing with a lot of us is, you know, a lot of us haven't changed. Uh what right. shifted is Hollywood and culture through activism and uh hey, now they shut themselves down. I am so disappointed yeah. about oh, this. Sure. And we're still gonna get stuff by you know, especially when I'm talking about nerd stuff, people are like, What are you gonna talk about? It's like I made it through COVID. I, I think yeah. we can make it through this and I can't I can laugh at them for two years. I think we all can. They're not Absolutely. gonna stop being dumb. Like no. they're a hundred percent, they're going to, cause in COVID we still had the, I take responsibility. And then the, the song that Gal Gadot sang and all those things, like they're still going to do dumb things. Oh, I hope we they can make videos. Can they make videos about the strike? I hope they oh. do. Does that count? No. If, you, if you're it doing it not. for a union showing solidarity, right. I think they should make lots of viral videos for us to react to. That would be great. Uh, it's just a bad time to strike right now because, well, the people writing the words uh, are on strike and they're yes. going to be on strike until fall. Uh, and the people they work for, mostly Disney and Warner Brothers, are billions of dollars in debt. So yeah. this is just... Yeah. Uh, this is suicide right now. And, well, uh, and it just came it. out that Disney tried to suffocate a movie about human trafficking. Yeah. So that's always going to, you know, get them more money. Yeah. You know, uh, except when it doesn't. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean when their stock crashes? Oh, yeah, like yeah. Stock every crashes. day, the yeah. Day. Every time I jump onto uh, Google because I have the same kind of thing where it aggregates. Never heard of it. Cultural things. Uh, it's Ask Jeeves, oh. kind of like that. Jeeves, kind I remember. Like okay, um, <laughs> they're a sponsor. It has that. the the Disney stock, and it's always red. Every time I open up Google, it's just like a dollar down, a dollar down, a dollar down. It's so good. It's, it's beautiful. Beautiful to see. Uh, I have and Bob no Iger's still for in. Him. Yeah, he's he, got, he got extended Look for uh, two th till two th 2000. I can't talk 2026. 
uh, which just so happens to be when everything's going to get delayed uh, because of the strike. Mm-hmm. So they're already saying that the the two months or the this two months, three months is going to delay everything out one year again, two year. Uh, because even if it ends at a certain time, you can't just like drop the movie in a, a summer movie in fall. It's got to right. be scheduled out to that other summer spot possibly. Uh, and while they have enough content, they they're screwed. So the, yeah. I mean, this shuts them down for this delays everything for a year minimum, probably two. Uh, and that's where Bob Iger, uh, in our last video, we talked about it and it was a recent interview. He said, yeah, you know, it's, it's going to take us till 2026 to turn this ship around. <sighs> Y'all gonna wait? No. It's three years. Yeah. What do you? I mean, if you're if you're Margot Robbie, sure, you've got the cash. Yep. But what if you're anyone else? Everybody behind the line. The crew guys. Or all the crew like guys. That, yeah. They've got nothing. People to People that to. need real jobs. Yeah. Now they cannot work. And I'm not saying Margot Robbie doesn't deserve that. I've seen her. My <laughs> great. Uh, apparently mid. That's what the internet is telling me. Mid. They said mid. <sighs> What does that mean? That means she's no good looking. That means she's, she's like, like a five, average. A what are you talking Margo about? Robbie? So, Margot Robbie? <laughs> I know. So the, the some dude, what is the some dude on the internet on Twitter was like, yeah, Margot Robbie. Is she oh, such so, a, oh she's according such to some dude on the internet? Yeah, oh, okay. Was going well, I'm around. glad that we got his. Expert. And then yeah. he was like, he posted <laughs> another picture and it was her without, without makeup. And it was like, see, look, she's a mid. And everybody was like, are you dumb? Dude, what do you, we have the I same hate, eyes? What I are you talking about? everyone. Yeah. This is the problem is like, it's like when people are like, look at Megan Fox, she has toe thumbs. I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> I can look past I, I don't care if she has no thumbs. Like what difference does it make? <laughs> like if she, if she lost half of her body, I'd be like, what she's gorgeous. Standards? What are the standards? Where are you going off of? Where, well, especially guys. Like, you know what that guy looks like? She's a mid- like you're morbidly obese. That was, yeah. you guys, that was literally you guys on Tuesday's show yeah. with Jonah Hill's girlfriend. That was. So that was. Just I pointed well, out. From experience, as an uggo, I know what they look like. First of all, I am a Detroit Six. <laughs> and a prison tent. prison tent. Yes. Yes. There you go. There you go. Yeah. So, I know what I am. Yeah. Five, I'm, I'm, I'm a five. <laughs> but outside of that. But I would call Margot a ten. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, easily. I mean, come on. And she's an talented. 11. Probably an eleven. Yeah. Like I an mean, eleven, like because she's talented, she can she's she can act really well. Oh, I don't care. That doesn't you know, factor in what is my it? It's not even what it, <laughs> I'm, it, None of is, that This is a purely surface conversation. Yeah. <laughs> but she any, can talk. <laughs> well, doesn't matter. Can, like, have you leave. seen her without makeup? Yeah. It's, yeah. What, I've seen a woman without makeup. What does yes. it matter? I prefer women without makeup. Yep. Yeah, liar. Uh, so I, <laughs> so I have I have a story relatable to both you guys. Is no three guys wearing makeup right now? <laughs> it's powder. <laughs> I, Which, I got some blush. Dude, we started the show and we yeah, were doing girls, like girls are ugly. They were like day. foundation. <laughs> dudes Let's are disgusting. On. No, men are disgusting. That's why I don't understand gay dudes. I totally understand lesbians. Like, yeah. yeah, like yeah, dudes are gross. I'm like totally. I understand. Nasty. I just uh, yeah, hair yeah. all over the place and you, you know how, you know how to work it. They wear man it. buns. Get out of here, dude! <laughs> well, I'm still finding God hair you saw in this that chair. Off. You too. What? I'm just glad your man buns in hell work Get alone. Here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jeez. How dare you? No, I'm kidding. I just like your hair a little bit shorter. Oh, I see. It's just you know, it's easier for me to pull. <laughs> 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 It doesn't matter. Just get to the joke. It means nothing. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. It sounds sexual. It, it was sexual. <laughs> Nervous drink. Speaking uh, of sexual. So, yeah, I got this story for you. Uh, apparently, there is a Japanese restaurant that's being shut down because customers were uh, reporting that they were coming down with uh, meth in their system. <laughs> After coming d- coming down with <laughs> meth in their system, I don't system. know how it works. You guys are the druggies. I well, the detectives tested to like uh, two packets of soy sauce, and they also tested positive for meth. And several employees uh, tested positive for meth, and customers got sick because of the meth. Yeah. But the knife show, unreal. Uh, like, yeah, the best. <laughs> uh, oh, yes. Yes. You w- <laughs> it was the greatest. I'm surprised that a restaurant didn't get more crowded. Yeah, can you guess the state this happened in? Uh, California, Oklahoma, Florida, Florida. Florida. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'm surprised. I'm surprised you both didn't get that. I almost want to. Well, I edit thought Florida. This. I didn't know Florida was that. <laughs> oh, they so meth you, place? you didn't know there was meth in Florida? No, I knew there was meth in Florida, but I, I know they were like so. specifically the meth state. Uh, there, any drug 
Florida. Oh, okay. <laughs> It's just safe to be like. Well, I guess there's a lot of meth. There's a lot of crank in California. Lots. Yeah, and mainly the homeless. Fentanyl. Fentanyl too. There. Yeah, more fentanyl. Is it? You think fentanyl's taking over? There were also 31 health violations at that restaurant. Just uh, adding to that. Just on top of it. On top of. Later they went back and checked. On top of the meth being in addition to food, we got a lot of meth going on. Let's check it out. So how did the meth get in? Was it a smuggling thing? Did they think it was so? There's an employee that they thought (laughs) no addict would give away their meth at the restaurant. I know, like I'm like you're giving it away for free. So they (laughs) said that one of the employees was like acting erratic. And they thought that that guy accidentally dropped Rich, it in, uh, Rich into their soy sauce or something. <laughs> yeah, if you're no, but it was you're packaged. They were prepackaged. What so the it would have to be like a, a like a you know transport like a transportation like through situation. like you know like in Breaking Bad when they put it in the chicken batter and stuff oh. like that. You know, like to transport it from one place. I don't know. I'm just you think probably it, like, what they seeps watched. through the, <laughs> the plastic. If they know. like stored it together, they're like they're transporting it. They have soy so, sauce and meth. Rocks. Why would you and then put them like, in the soy sauce though? It's liquid. Well, I'm I'm saying like maybe there's like a bunch of packets of soy sauce, and you got your rock in the middle, and you got more Did packets of soy sauce. Salt? Maybe they were so- on meth salt or something. Maybe and they, they thought were it was a good idea at the time. Maybe they They're like, oh, made. This is well, gonna be fun. That might explain. It's gonna a taste lot. good. But what about the other thirty? I mean, I feel like <laughs> yeah. At some point, the meth was in an anus. <laughs> Obviously, if there's thirty yeah. other health code violations, which it's hilarious because it's also raw fish. Like there's just a lot. <laughs> Of danger going yeah. on at a yes. sushi place <laughs> to have 31 <laughs> violations. Like, what were the other ones? They're like, first of all, the fish, none of this yeah, is one. even close to healthy. Very fishy. And they're like, by the way, there's meth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. One and more thing. And this guy's just like, oh, what? Well, mm-hmm. But the place was I have really to wash clean. My hands, I'm sorry. I'm it was like, really clean up front. Yeah. In and the, there, in and the there was a bunch of radios that were half taken apart. <laughs> Like we, yeah. just tweak it <laughs> Your sous chef is blowing a gun. <laughs> uh, yes, there was lots of gay sex going on too. happening in the, yeah. Yeah. Just in the freezers. <laughs> yeah, they have like that funny like choo choo thing or like the the little the thing the, that, the little ma- that the, pretends to pee. The cat, like when they do it at the table, um, like oh, a yeah. walk. Oh yeah. But instead, he's doing it in his mouth, hoping he gets money. <laughs> <laughs> Surprised they got this far. I know. It's, yeah. It's amazing. I don't know. I've never been to... A, I've never done meth. That was the one thing that I never did. Really? Did you do meth? Yeah. How Lots was it? Of it. Uh, crank was... Are we going to... Is it okay to even talk? Well, Crank was better. We can talk about it. Crank yeah. was better. Uh, it was made by bikers back in the eighties. Yeah. And so it was just more, more of a Coke high that lasted longer. Meth is, I guess, more like crack. I've never smoked crack, but it's like bypassing the, the high and getting right to the Jones. Yeah. I've smoked crack. Well, yeah. But I've never, yeah. I never like, did like, meth. Wouldn't you, meth why would you want to bypass the high? Uh, why would you make crack cocaine? Why would you try that? Like, uh, that's true. It's the same thing. That's true. But it's, why would you keep doing it? It's though? cheaper. Like, uh, cause well, once you're already by the, I mean, you don't, I'm start, sorry. I'm just like, I'm a summer st- child. I don't know. <laughs> no, you don't start with crack or meth. You usually start with uh, probably Adderall, work your way up okay. to cocaine and then you can't afford that stuff anymore. And crack is cheaper. Meth is cheaper. The kind of, there's different types of meth. There's the, the, the kind you smoke, there's the kind you shoot up. Okay. Uh, and then crank, it was more of a snortable thing. It's not optimal and it really messes up your nose. And yeah. I had a vampiric nostril for a long time. But, Where it uh, like sucks your blood? No, I have one. I had one nostril. Oh, yeah, it's functional. It rips it apart. like shuts it down. Yeah, I, I, it's it it snorted a lot of crank. Damn. Well, I'm glad you're still here. It's not easy to get Me off too. of at all. No, I mean it's really? easier than opioids. Yeah, that I was fortunately uh, that was hard to kick, but I was only addicted to it because I been, I was taking it as a painkiller, and I also well I started it kind of as recreational but then eventually i took it as a painkiller for my knee and then once i ended up getting off of it i was violently ill yeah but you know cocaine and alcohol and you know it's kind of my my jam yeah and boy that's how not... did you how did you get off of it did you have to do any other drug to get you off of that drug Mm-mm. 
So you just like cold turkey went off, or you do, did you wean down? Well, with alcohol, I I tried to get off many times. Um, eventually, I had to because there was a alcohol tether on my leg, ah. and if that went off, I would go to prison. So it was sort of you know, wait, how does <laughs> you that had to, wait? How does that work? Had to. Um, it monitored the alcohol in my blood. Well, so it's so like, if I were to sweat, oh, and if, if I even use it. Supposedly, if I even use like deodorant with alcohol in it and it went off, they could detect it. Yes, could they would come it. and wow. take me. And I also had a alcohol monitor in my car, so I would have to blow into that. So it was sort of a okay, double yeah. jeopardy. Um, and that was after several, mo- like almost a year without a license. But with okay. cocaine, um, <laughs> no, I kind of just, I guess I kind of just drank more while I shook off of it. Cause I really did cocaine to stay up and drink. That was what I So liked. it was just a means of you getting yeah, the and then energy I, I to kinda continue got, to drink. Yeah. And I kind of got uh, addicted incidentally. Hmm. Yeah. But it turns into a cycle of maintenance. Like you just, <clears throat> you need the drug to do anything. Yeah. Like I need to go to the grocery store. I need some cocaine. That's yeah. why you don't, that's why it's okay to skip the high. Cause you're not after that anymore. You're after the well, baseline. It stops getting you high. Like after a certain amount of time, like Coke just doesn't work. Yeah. yeah. You don't feel yeah. it. I mean, it really, you kind of chase the first high you ever yeah. get from it. Yeah. And it never is the same after that first one. Mm. I mean, it, it periodically gets less and less and less till it, it really is almost nothing but coffee. Yeah. Yeah, wow. yeah. I mean, when you do it long enough, meth or coke, you just feel like you're going to die. So the high brings you uh, a little above feeling like you're going to die. Man, uh, it yeah. it sucks, but you feel like you need it. And and I my cocaine habit, I did that one later in life. That was like my midlife crisis. Was I'm okay. Gonna take up cocaine. The sad part is, is heroin is very effective all the time, and and opioids, and you know, obviously, yeah. you need more and more and more to get that mm-hmm. that feel. But you will achieve a very euphoric feel. Oh, oxy's are the worst. Man. Yeah, dude, it's terrible. it's a terrible. I mean, thing. they're good. They're terrible. That was like, <laughs> and you mix those with cokes. That was like a little. Uh, what they call that? Uh, like an Alabama speedball or something like that. Oh, uh, Oxycontin and yeah. Uh, cocaine. Yeah. Yeah. I've done it. And, yeah. uh, well, and especially Vicodin and, you know, all that yeah. stuff back in the day. And I worked at a pharmacy. Oh, sh- oh when shit. When I was uh, 15. That cannot be good. Well, it was the heyday of nobody cared. I yep, mean, this is right. when people walked into doctor's offices and you had very pretty girls and they were like, hey, you should get Oxys. And, yeah. you know, this, and this, I mean, they didn't even really count the tab you know they didn't count any of this stuff it was all by weight so you could take your cellophane out and just sneak a few valiums and whatever and they were the fives and tens the yellows and blues and you go sold a few at school and of course this is a joke for anybody (laughs) who might arrest me Uh, but (laughs) you know you could get vicodin it was very easy to get farm farmies right up until about i don't know what the I guess for me, early 2000s, but I'm sure. 2012. Yeah, I was going to say, it's got to be later than that. But I mean, I stopped doing them in about the mid 2000s. Yeah. Yeah, I I had to stop 10 years ago too. It was, I was doing everything at the end there. So, uh, and and that crash and burn, that stuff was going to kill me too. I was doing so many, it was like stupid. Oh, it destroys your liver. Yeah. destroys it and that was the problem is my liver enzymes have fortunately come back but there's a one point where it's like you're not gonna live like it's yeah you basically have cirrhosis and it just, That's just but it. fortunately i was young enough to where your liver is it can rejuvenate it itself. can it can recover from that yeah, yeah. but after totally. a point it's just like you've done enough damage it but cannot recover big right. pharma who everybody loves now right what, what you what you were right. saying was in there and paying off doctors and like right. bring, putting in the hot girls in there and they were just passing them out like it was candy uh these pain centers started popping up yep uh, which were specifically the expensive dinners for doctors. Yes. The, oh, dude. Oh, please. Yeah. How about the, yeah. The pain yeah. doctors who were just writing scripts, and these these are guys with no scruples or morals. They're like, I went just to school, became docs. a doctor, and now I'm getting rich. And uh, they got rich, mm-hmm. and then they had uh, a, a. This might not be fun for everybody, but they had a cure. You know, the the drug companies came up with with a cure. You know, methadone with heroin. Yep. They had Suboxone, which is yeah. Uh, 
Just another drug. People get just as addicted to Suboxone. Yes, they do. Yep. Yes, yeah. they do. Well, and my uncle, uh, he was a drug addict. Oh, look at the pillows rise up. Oh, they just slide down. Hey, is that my uncle saying hi? Uh, I, uh, my uncle, um, who was a drug addict, he's a heroin addict. He died when I was a kid. And sweetest man you could ever meet. You know, a lot of drug addicts are and mm-hmm. really good dude. And he wrote this biography and I found it after he passed away. It was actually after my mom passed away. And it was about his struggles with heroin. And he was uh, in charge of a, a, a rehab. And when you get to the end of it, you know, he kind of sadly just passes away. But he yeah. he died going back out. And he was addicted to methadone. Mm. And he, yep. he was addicted to the thing that was treating him because he started doing heroin when he was playing baseball when he was 16. For, you know, and it's like you read a story and you're like, okay, well, it's this element of abuse. And, you know, my grandmother was an alcoholic yeah. and all this other stuff. And you see it and it's like... He nicest dude ever, but it just was this this demon that he could not get away from him. And like reading it, it's so tragic. But it's like the problem was was the cure was not a cure at all. It was just this this band aid mm-hmm. that always made you want heroin. And I feel so bad for those people. Yeah, that, that still deal with that. And, and and Suboxone is my friend did that too, man. And he would go right out and do the same amount that he was doing. Just before that, and I mean, you're talking 30 Vicodin, insane amounts. Pharma's got a pretty good racket, man. They they, do. they they provide you with what makes you sick, and then they provide you with what cures you, which yeah. makes you sick, and then they provide you. And the if next you go thing, out and start taking and Vicodin thing. on Suboxone, the the Vicodin is not going to affect you because the Suboxone is an inhibitor, but you're still going to chase both highs, and it will kill you. So, uh, yeah, it, it, what it may, what methadone and Suboxone do is really keep you from having withdrawal from being sick but with like heroin and enough vicodin like you have to go to a detox and you have to be uh have a medical professional look over you or you could die you could absolutely die i've known too many people who died so So, uh that that's thanks to big pharma big pharma thank you well and that's alcohol too and people don't even realize that you know alcohol is uh fatal right and i mean i knew that when i was a kid i remember the first time i had uh dt's and I would have delusions, you know, and the, one of the first times I had it was I couldn't eat this rice. I was just like trembling. And I drove down eight mile, went to this party store. What's what we call them there? Mm-hmm. But I know they don't call them in the liquor store. Yeah. Uh, and we went in and uh, I, I got a, a half a fifth of Bacardi Limon or a half pint. And I just chugged it. And I went back into where we were eating and I finished my rice because my hand was steady. But I remember one time I walked down into my house and it was my main floor and there was like a party of people, but they were all silent. And it was just my dad watching TV. And I was like, why is my dad just watching TV yeah. in the middle of this party? And why is everybody being quiet? And I realized, oh, this is all not real. Well, so your I, dad was there? He, or he yeah, and I the... talked to my dad. I just went up and told him the truth. So because, he was the only one that was really there? Wow. Yeah, he was, uh, he was in active combat, and then he stayed in Vietnam to be a medic. And uh, he was like, well, you're having DTs. And he was God. like very honest with me and telling yeah. me what was going on. Because I was like, I'm just seeing people that aren't even here. And I, I, I had just done this damage to my brain. Mm-hmm. And that's just alcohol, something that is completely legal. I was Well, I was doing alcohol, plus I was doing a lot of LSD, mushrooms, all oh, kinds okay. of so stuff at like the time. But, a and not a this, it wasn't clean acid or anything by any stretch of the imagination mm-hmm. at that time. It's not like the microdoses you get now. I mean, yeah. this is dirty Detroit LSD and stuff in the With 90s. Rat poison. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for real. Like, you had strychnine in strychnine, it, and they found all yeah. that kinds Jeez. of stuff in it. Like, really bad stuff. So what was it that got, I mean, for both of you, that was your reason to get out of that? Um, You know, like, did you, was it family or was it just you're going to die and you had that realization? Like, what was it that brought you out? My 13th arrest, and I still struggle with it every day. Yeah. You know, but it was honestly, and that's, people have said, you know, I talk about it a lot, but I do because I know people watch the show and and when I get messages from people saying, you said this and I've been sober for three years. That shocks me because I, I struggle with it a lot. But what got me out of it is I always felt insecure. I always had issues. And the only thing I could find to escape what was going on in my life was drugs. And the only thing that gave me that out was, was alcohol and drugs. And it's the only thing that made me feel better. And honestly, like doing something that I loved with my life uh, and my 13th arrest and realizing that I would 
I'm already going to die earlier than I was supposed to. Mm. I've, I've dealt with that, but just realizing that it was either prison death or changing my life was, was the thing that changed, that yeah. got me out of it. Gary. Same. Uh, I, I, I mean, the, there's a saying being sick and tired of sick and tired, but like I had a big long run of sobriety and then I relapsed again. And, mm -hmm. uh, I truly learned the meaning of it's a progressive disease because, uh, I was, uh, I, I had never done Coke before I had done crank, but I, so when I started up Coke, I was doing lines like this to begin with, which is nuts. Not good. So that's, that's <laughs> the meth. Yeah. And, uh, so that, that, that it wasn't a super long time I relapsed. I mean, I caught up on all my drug abuse, did drugs I didn't did do before. And uh, I just knew I was going to die. I just knew it. And, and I didn't want to die. And I, and I had finally, you know, I had ruined the one good thing of my, well, the, the, the fi my family, uh, my business, everything. And so I hit rock bottom again. I'm like, well, I don't want to go back to prison and I want to die. So, uh, you know, my wife threw my ass in a, in a half in a halfway in a sober living environment yeah. and it just it's i i just said okay I'm, I'm you know at least i knew what to do i had the tools and i'm like all right we'll give it one more chance because mm -hmm. i know I, I i do not have another run in me and just like with dave i have accepted that i'm not going to live to 80 i yeah. just so i want to i want to i've i've abused my body so much so i just want to enjoy what time there is left and uh, i saw that as an opportunity a forced one because you know the whole thought of uh of being at home and being oh my god i got kicked out of my house and i'm gonna be that dad visiting his kid yeah right not to shame anybody's doing that out there but i just don't want to be that so that that really kept me focused no, thank god for of, mrs neurotic yeah that's right no a lot of people that do have to do that though and i know we're you know we're getting close to running out of time but it, it's hard you know and i have a yeah. lot of friends that have to do that and they they're working out of it you know and they've, they're working their way through it and it's very difficult and i know in the last few years a lot of people have had to deal with that because of the pandemic and other things losing business people on the brink of suicide and i know yeah. what that's like there is points in my life where it's like i think i'm just gonna blow my brains out and if i didn't have a kid i would have Man. And and that's just the truth. And I think there's a lot of people that have to realize that you know there there is hope and like there is a there is that higher power and there is things that I found that really help me. And uh, it's important to avoid toxic people and find something that's positive in your life. Absolutely. And, yeah. and relapse is a part of it. And the it's true. Like as cliche as it is, like you are your own worst enemy all the time. And that's the craziest thing. But once you realize that, and like you said, whenever you've been locked up, if it's rehab or if it's jail or if it's prison, that is the worst feeling in the world because you took it away from yourself. Mm -hmm. You're there because of you, no one else. Yeah, and, and you get to think yeah. about it for a long time. Yep. <clears throat> and, and to the dads who uh, have to visit their kids, uh, that, that whole shifting of, of, of your mindset of like, oh, I have to do this it's just like work i get you you still get to visit your kid that's a good thing that's something to strive for and you can uh and and even if you don't have kids uh it does get better uh i we hear that all the time when we first go to meetings and the first time i heard it, i'm like shut up you know yeah uh, but it actually it. does you you, you want to fight it every step of the way but uh the only thing that's ever worked for me and i'm pro probably worked for you is going to meetings going to meetings getting a sponsor working your steps yeah, once you realize it works. Yep. And then figuring it out. I mean, it's it's like, oh, this is actually effective. Yeah. And accountability is an amazing thing. It really is. Because the people that fight it, you're like, no, once you realize it's you. Yeah. That's I mean, really all it takes. It's, 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 it's yeah, it, it's it's a humility thing, right? Yeah. You know, like, uh, and I guess by the time I I got a. I had no pride left. I'm like, I just publicly screwed up my life again in front of every customer in front of my store, mm. in front of every, it was super public. Uh, I've been strip searched. <laughs> I've had my butt searched in prison. So <laughs> I ain't got no pride left. No shame. No shame. <laughs> you know, it's fine. Let, let that shit go. And it gets a lot easier. It gets a lot easier going, wow, I am a giant fuck up. Well, Okay. That's why I like the idea of like anybody going, you're very humble. I'm like, what, what, first of all, I have no <laughs> idea why I wouldn't be, but also it's like, do you, do you have any idea what I've done? Yeah. <laughs> like, like, have you seen the things? Like it, it, it's insane to me to think anybody who knows me, whenever they say like, I always knew you'd be a comedian. It's like, you did not. 
you thought I'd be dead. And it's, it's true. I mean, I, I'm shocked that I'm still here because yeah. I know what I've put my body through. Yeah. And even at a very young age, it was a coping mechanism, you know, and, and I'm glad that it's done with, but every day I have to, str- I, I do fight it because there's always going to be that voice in my head that says, you're not good enough. You yeah. should take yourself out. Yeah. Just try I, one more. Yeah. But you just have to fight it. You know, you got to want to live. I've, it, I've never been like that. I've always like, oh, we'll get to tomorrow. Yeah. Right? But, I've, but I've lost so many friends to that. And I've lost count, you know. And dude, it's I'm saying like even in the last year, I always hear, you know, one of my friends. Dude, yeah. Recently, yeah. since we even since we started the show, it's there's been a lot yeah. that's happened to you and it's uh, like and your friends recently. So and it's like this person, this person, yeah. and, and it's all yeah. people from your like your early past, and yeah, childhood and childhood. everything. And it's you hear about it and you go, and then they'll say the reason, and I mm-hmm. go, okay, well, that's not what happened, <laughs> you know. And you go, <laughs> yep, yeah, yep. but you just play along, and it's it's tragic. And and anybody out there who's ever struggling, and so just realize you do have value. Yep. And if you don't see it in yourself, nobody else will. And there's places you can go for help that don't yes. cost anything. Yeah. Yep. Well, on that note. Wow. Uh, so yeah. Well, you got really it, serious in so here. Sorry, so keep seriously. coming back. It works uh, if you work it. Yeah, it works. <laughs> uh, queef. <laughs> uh, <laughs> fart joke. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Gary, for being on. Uh, thank you for going deep there for a second. Sure. Thank you very much, honestly, for sharing that. Yeah. It really means a lot to me and, and a lot of the viewers. Right. Hey, no problem. No problem. Thank you for, for sharing, real. too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I've, I'm always willing to talk about it because, uh, you know, well, I've talked about it a lot in AA meetings. But, yes. But uh, I think, uh, especially after the last couple of years, man, uh, you know, relapse, they said 60%. Uh, relapse hit 60%. You yes. Know, people couldn't go to meetings, the Zoom meetings, you know, I tried them too. They, they're not great, but they're something. Yes. Uh, and uh, yeah, a lot of people went back out. So uh, there, that help is out there. Again, go to your local AA. I prefer AA, but NA's out there too. Yes. Go out and get some help. And you can look it up online. Mm-hmm. There's all kinds of places you can go. Yeah. And everybody there is as nervous as the first time as you are, believe me. So you can find Gary on Nerdrotic, the channel that we work on. It's his. He's the host with the most on Friday Night Tights. A lot of great guys on that show as well. So that's tomorrow. And uh, we're going to be in Comic-Con. Yeah. Next week. Next week. With Eric July. And Chris Gore. And Chris Gore. Dude, it's going to be nuts. That's awesome. Yeah, it's going to be it's fun. It's going to be crazy. I need to go to that. You should go. Ooh, I yeah. really do. This might be the easiest year to go. This would be the easiest <laughs> year I to know, go. I was going to no say. No actors. I, no Hollywood. It's going to be like I'm a real I'm working. Con. Otherwise, I'm going to go next time. Go next time. I want to go. We'll, we'll get you hooked up. We'll, I will we'll, go we'll for real. Up. I've always wanted to. Yeah, we'll set it up. I've always been outside of a Comic-Con, too, where I'm like, why are all these people dressed up? <laughs> Let's like, go on. Comic-Con. I'm like, oh, right. Okay. All these nerds. Yeah, it's you in the Westboro Baptist Baptist Church right there. Yeah, just yeah. protest them. Just protesting my show. Yeah. <laughs> Dave, where are you going to be? <laughs> I will be at the Comedy Zone in Jacksonville, Florida, this weekend. Uh, you can catch me one show Friday, two shows Saturday, and then you can catch me in Columbus, Ohio, next weekend, the twenty first and twenty second. Omaha, Nebraska, coming up after that, and then Royal Oak, Michigan. Uh, coming up after that and then i'll be in indiana so just go to my website go to davelandow.com uh you can click it and uh there's also going to be a good apology v- uh, video on there <laughs> yeah. about gorillas and champs and the various primates that i'm going to learn about and better myself uh because i just i never want to confuse any sort of animal again because i know that people have google and uh are better than me yes yes and dick measuring contest means you're measuring your own dick length. I had no idea. Not other people's <laughs> and how many of them you can measure. Yes. I, all these years I've been running around and just measuring cops. Very inappropriate. We apologize. That's we why you got arrested it. 13 times. It's why. Most, I mean, <laughs> it's unbelievable. I've, I've measured 4,700 penises just this year. That is a record, dude. That's I a really know. good and they A lot me. of measuring. I know. I know. I, I, these bathhouses just let me in. <laughs> Bye. Bye.